the beam of a laser, an ethereal shimmering ray of light hovering in mid-air, looks beautiful, photons in perfect harmony, traveling hand in hand into infinity. Or do they? Is a laser beam perfectly collimated, or does it quickly spread out, getting bigger with distance? Let's take a closer look and measure it. Don't stare at a strong laser dot at close range. Wear laser safety glasses and let a camera be your eyes in the shown experiments. Hi! In this video, I'll try to measure some of my laser's divergence. The divergence tells us how much the laser beam spreads out over distance. It is typically so little that it is measured in a very small unit called milliradian. A divergence of zero milliradians means the beam has the same diameter no matter how far from the laser you measure it. A full angle divergence of one milliradian means the beam is only getting one millimeter wider for every meter. Sounds simple to test. Just measure the diameter of the laser beam at two points. But right off the bat, I should mention that my measurements will not be scientifically perfect. My method is more ghetto styled than ISO certified. Let me show you how I do it. I will start gently with a relatively eye safe laser. And for high precision, I will measure at a far distance, around 12 meters. The target is an old computer case. Well suited since it has a big flat surface and is made of metal, so it won't melt later when I test stronger lasers. Furthermore, it is an unreflective matte black. Less reflection of a laser beam is always safer and will make the laser dot more distinct with less glare. Next, I use a laser measure. What else? To find the distance between the two points, I'll measure the beam diameter at. I aimed for 12 meters, but it turns out the 12 meters is to the back of the laser measure not the front. Ah well, the important thing is knowing the exact distance, 11 meters and 90 centimeters in my tests. In front of the laser, I'll put an ND8 filter, lowering the laser beam's power to 1 8th. Time to turn on the laser and aim it at the PC case. Finally, I'm ready to measure the beam diameter at two fixed points. Near the aperture, it looks like two and a half millimeters. Will it diverge and be wider at the far end? Yes, that's definitely wider than 2.5 mm, so not a zero divergence beam. Here it is a fuzzy dot and not totally clear how much I should include as the beam diameter. For an ISO certified measurement, I should take the part of the dot that has this energy density. Um. Another common way is to include the part that is more than 1 over E squared of the highest energy intensity at the center of the beam. In other words, the edges of the dot where it drops below 13.5% of maximum intensity should not be included. Not easy to get right. I'm just gonna eyeball it and say the beam is around 15 mm wide then. The ND filter may be a little exaggerated for this laser. I tried without the filter and I still say it's around 15 mm wide when not including the weak edges. Good, we now have all the measurements needed for calculating the laser's divergence. Though in two different units, meters and millimeters. For the formula, we need them to be in the same unit. I will compromise and use centimeters. The formula for full angle divergence is simple. So simple that even Windows calculator can be used. You just need to change it to scientific and radians to get the result in milliradians. After typing the measurements in parentheses, an equal sign for an intermediate result, we need to apply the inverse tangent function. This is found under trigonometry and by clicking second to inverse the functions. Now choose inverse tangent and we have the half angle divergence. Multiply by 2 to get full angle divergence and multiply by a thousand to go from radians to milliradians. The laser's divergence is 1.05 milliradians. That's actually good. 
I'd be happy if all my lasers have a full angle divergence of 1 mm or less, and the result also match well with the guideline I mentioned earlier. This laser's beam roughly widens 12 mm over 12 meters, equal to 1 mm per meter. That's 1 mm. Notice how important it is to know if the divergence for a laser is listed as half angle or full angle, and at what energy density they cut off. Is it for example half width at 13.5% of max energy density, or is it full width at half of max energy density? The latter is commonly used for laser diodes. The number for divergence doesn't tell you much on its own if the method isn't specified, and often it isn't. Full angle is the most telling for how you experience the divergence in real life. You notice the beam's increasing diameter, not only its radius. Let's try another, much stronger laser. Unlike the first, this one has a focus ring. Looks focused now. It features a broad area laser diode, also known as a multimode single emitter. This makes the dot elongated, more like a line than a circle. I will therefore measure the divergence on both X and Y axis. Oddly enough, the dot is a vertical line at the aperture, but a horizontal line at the target end. I guess it is a result of the focusing. For a more scientific approach, you should know exactly where the focal point is to avoid errors. For example, measuring the two diameters with the focal point right between them could fool you into believing the laser doesn't diverge at all. But as mentioned earlier, I am not aiming for scientific perfection here. I just measure the apparent practical divergence as experienced in my setup. And it's not looking good for this laser. The end dot is huge, even when excluding the weak intensities. The result varies from pretty good on the y-axis with 1.2 milliradians to very bad on the x-axis with 6 milliradians. It could benefit from some correction optics, like the use on the red laser in this show laser, Wicked Laser's latest version of the laser cube now with wireless connection instead of a USB cable, and a beefed up green laser. Measuring the divergence of the lasers in a show laser is more challenging, since it is not a simple laser pointer with a steady beam I can turn on and off. I ended up letting it project a white text dot and simply dial each laser up and down in power. Perhaps not a fair test, because the mirrors in it are constantly scanning the whole text area, and the lasers are pulsed on when the mirrors are in the right position. I don't even know if the dot is only projected as a single pixel, one laser beam width, but this is the best I could come up with. From a distance, it does look like a white laser dot. Not the red, green and blue laser dots from free well aligned lasers it actually is. Up close, it appears like the very strong blue laser has the largest divergence. Let's test them individually. It is really challenging to decide where the energy densities drop below 13.5%, but my best guesses give this result. Yeah, the 1300mW blue laser's divergence is not as good as the low divergence of the 400mW red laser, which has correction optics. Luckily, the weak blue spillage is not noticed when the dot whizzes around in a laser show projection. After a quick message, I'll test my most expensive laser. Does it have the best divergence? A big thanks to all my patrons. I appreciate your help with keeping these videos like this one coming. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link in the description. Thank you. This is an old laser glow Hercules. I bought it secondhand back in 2008. The current improved models are specified as having a full angle divergence of under 1.2 millirads. 
As I remember it, this one was listed as 1.5 millirads back then. Let's measure it. Two milliradians full angle in my crew test. Not the worst or the best. The one dollar keychain laser and much stronger red laser in the laser cube have the lowest divergence. Click like to pay respect to that cheap keychain laser. It is not just a toy. It is a highly collimated light source. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video enough to click like and subscribe for more like it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.